Hello everyone and welcome to Gospel Fairworks. My name is James and today I'll be doing another 3D model kit. This one being some LSWR gate stock coaches. And as you can see, they're rather nicely detailed already, but um, I do want to add some more detail onto them because uh, otherwise it would just be basically me gluing these onto some uh, 3D printed sashes. And um, I do need to still get the uh, little gates themselves or find a um, uh, stand in for them, but yes, he's a he's been done up, it's a 2D uh, camera, very nicely detailed so far. But I would like to add some more to it. And um, yeah, the reason why I wanted to do uh, these kits well, I say kit model is um, I need some push pull coaches, and why not get some rather unique. Uh, so very unique looking coaches with the little gate, uh, gates in the middle here. So uh, yeah, the extra detail which I would like to add is add all the, well, I say add all, add as much of all the uh, railing as I can, uh, try and get an interior made for them and see if that works. Uh, I'll be doing my usual adding glazing and painting all that a lot and hopefully I can add a, a running number, well the set number on the end here as well. And um, I will be using a. Uh, first of all, I have washed them because uh, you're meant to gloss uh, 3D printed kits, well, 3D printed models, just to wash off any residue left on. Um, but uh, I will be using a, a guide. I'll quickly flash it up on the screen if I remember. Uh, this is the uh, Kerno. I think it's Kerno. Probably Kerno. Um, no, commissioned. Uh, no, basically. Double O gates version of these, so I'll be using that as my guide, and hopefully I'll be able to make something out of them. So um, yeah, I'll quickly get these all painted up. I'm going to get them spray painted in grey first for an undercoat, and then I'll be trying to block out the insides from getting painted. Then paint the outside green, and then I'll paint the roofs in the right colour. Hopefully the right colour anyway. So um, yeah, I'll crack on with that before the weather changes, and I'll see you in a bit. Well, here we are with all the undercoat done. Well, pretty much, as I do need to do a little bit of retouching on the second co uh, coat. And there's a few bits here and there, but um, I have taken the opportunity to drill all the holes which I want to do um, using a little drill like this. It's, uh, I think it's a 0.5 mil. I'm not entirely sure, but um, you can pick them up quite cheaply. These things. That's this little carrying case which they come in. Um, I keep waking them as well. But uh, yeah, they come up probably about a fiver, you no, know, for a pack of ten, either in various sizes or in you know, specific size if you want. But um, yes, due to how delicate this model is, well, these models are, I've only opted to do a couple of the holes. So just using the um, driving trailer as an example, I've done two uh, holes for. The handrails around the door uh, on both sides on both coaches and also just the next bit for the driving coats I've done the handrail holes for the end so add a little bit more detail uh, next thing I need to do is spray paint it green and then I'll start adding all the details so um, yeah as I said I'll be spray painting green I will be masking off uh, the inside because I don't want that to be green uh, the top I'll just repaint because it's just a lot easier uh, I have got ooh, the actual trellis gates uh, these are you get two you get one set for each coat so you need to pay that separately annoyingly but um, that's how it is and uh, yeah like I said I will be painting all these details separately. Uh, I don't remember if there is actually an emblem, uh, the uh, British Railways emblem on this, I don't think there is, so we mostly all green. Um, the only little transfer detail which I'll be doing is the set number on the end. And I think that's about it really. Uh, then I need to do the 3D printing of the sashi, which I'm still testing. Uh, then I'll need to stick some wheels on and hopefully it will be done after adding all the glazing and all that so um, 
yeah, I'll get around to that, and then I can also tell you a little bit about the prototype. So until see you in a bit. The LSWR vegetable stock, otherwise referred to by enthusiasts as gate stock on account of their distinctive entrance arrangements, were first introduced in 1906. Built for a similar style as the main bats of steel uh, steam rail motors, and were originally uh, to be pulled by the small C14 Loco itself, based on the rail motor, but was found to be underpowered, as was its replacement, the S14. Eventually, the Adams 02 class was used. These coaches mainly operated in the Plymouth area. The most obvious and unusual feature of these vehicles was the collapsible metal trellis gates, for which they gained them or common title. Converted from wire control to air control by the Southern Railway, V with a modified driving cab end, with some straying as far west as Leon Solent, being pulled by X LBSCR locos. However, the end of the LSWR gate stock, set 373, was disgraceful. By 1958, these two coaches were the sole survivors of the original 31 gate stock coaches. By July of 1960, Mr. John Leroy, then president of the embryonic Bluebell Railway, thought he had purchased both coaches for preservation. But in October of 1960, while stored at the siding at Creton, they were officially withdrawn after having suffered some minor immersion damage when the river Freedy went on one of its periodic rampages. By the following Monday, they had gone to the Scrappers Bonfire at New Haven's Town's Gracious North, North Quay sidings, leaving no survivors of these unusual pulpus coaches. Right, try this again because um, I originally did try to record this session, but then I found out that my uh, camera memory card kind of corrupted itself. So um, I actually did lose some footage, but oh well, I'll try to. We'll try again, but um, yes, here's the finished product on my own made sashi. Use my 3D printer. If anybody wants to know the dimensions of the uh, sashi, it's 95 millimeters length and 13 width, and 1.5 millimeters thickness. If so, if you want to make it yourself, uh, you could probably use plastic card, but I'm not skilled enough to do that, so I use my printer. Uh, like I said the footage which I did uh, end up losing is when I put on the transfers. I've got a little guard sign there on both sides for where the guard is, and also the uh, set number which is 373. Uh, just to indicate that this will be, that since it's in BR green, it would only be 373 because that's the only one that's. Um, uh, ran no with this colour. Uh, but uh, yeah there's a slight wonky bit on the side uh, for the sassy um, coat because um I actually damaged the sassy slightly. But uh yes yeah, so other than that it's fairly free rolling because uh, one bad thing which I did have to do which is I can put a interior inside because I had to put some weights in so I figured I'd rather have it you know, running well than having detail which I can't even see. So yes, it's something which I have to give up with. Uh, I said it runs, they run decently well, they eat about 25 grams each now, uh, which it does only what, 10 grams each, so including all the bits and pieces, so uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, this is, uh, I can't remember if I did mention who makes uh, these um, no, 3D prints, which is uh, Recreation 21. You can probably find them on uh, Safeways. But uh, yeah, it's not bad. They are pricey, and you do have to do a lot of work uh, afterwards. As I said uh, each coat is probably about, including all the bits and pieces which uh, you need, is probably about 40 odd quid each. Uh, and that's not including like, bogey and stuff like that. So uh, yeah, it's pricey, but it does do um, no prototypes which uh, nobody else, no the main manufacturers don't do. So it's a trade-off really. Uh, one thing which I should probably fix at some point is closing up this gap here, 
because um, yeah, I didn't quite do it properly. It's because uh, these buffers are a bit too long. But uh, yeah, other than that, no, it's quite a nice little model, and I'm happy with it. Even though you know, it's slightly wonky coat. I said I could probably add more detail, but that's probably a skill level above me. So uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm just happy with it as it is, really. So, uh, yeah, I just need to get a uh, LSWR 02 class to run with it. But um, I did try to run my uh, M7, but that was in the previous recording and I can't be bothered to get it back out now. But uh, yeah, it does run well, uh, even though my M7 doesn't quite run, but run well. But uh, yeah. I'm happy with it and I hope you're happy and enjoyed this video. Uh, feel free to comment, like and subscribe and all that other lot. And I hope to see you again next time. So take care now. Bye bye.